hi guys i'm back again today with another reaction video and today we're checking out um uh, an iranian youth tells why he apostates from islam apostates from islam wow that's a word that i haven't heard it forever <laughs> but anyways this is also going to be asked or this is with Dr. Zachary Nike, so we'll see. Well, before we do start, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell button, and let's go straight into the video. It's raining here, so probably the internet's gonna be a little bit slow. Do we have a question from this mic yeah, here? Sure. I'd just first like to say thank you for coming here. And my name is Puya, so I'm a student drama. And I come from Iran, not Iraq. Iran, the old name Persia. So I come from a religious family. My father, I mean, my family are Muslim. But I was born as a Muslim. But I didn't want to be born as a Muslim because, you know, so as a family I born. But still, I haven't accepted Islam because of some certain points. Uh, my main question was about, I mean, about the time, like ancient time, back to the thousand years ago. When the time the Islam come to my country and we became a Muslim. So as I read in the history and those kind of stuff, I found it out that the Arab countries, so they attacked my country and they invade my country and they brought the Islam by force. Without my king accepted. So Persia was an old country and it was the most civilized country from the ancient time until now. We believe a real God, we were worshiping a real God and our religion was Zartosh. So he was a prophet also. So we believe in good things, good thought, good words. So even Cyrus the Great, he was the king of the world and he was doing a lot of good things even some people they was confused that they called him Masih or Masih I think uh, from this is going to be my assumption from initial just listening to what he's got to say for that brief moment I can see that the reason why he deviated from Islam is the connotation of Islam like be, being seen by the, the, the world or a majority of the people as a bad religion like because if you say you're muslim there is a kind of like a you know people will look at you in a weird way like oh you're a terrorist i don't know if i can say that on youtube so every time that i kind of like murmur my words it's because i'm not sure if those words can be said on youtube without me getting demonetized or like blocked because youtube is sensitive like it's it's very very um how do you call it like it's a platform wherein your content will also get uh discriminated right like my other content nobody cares but then if it comes to islamic content you have to go through a lot of reviews like they will make it yellow because green means you're good to go red is it's blocked or it's strike and yellow means that it needs to be reviewed your video and most of my islamic content are the one that get yellow because they just want to see if we are not doing something bad here. So whenever I talk like this, it's because I just want to censor myself because YouTube is going to. But anyways, going back, yeah, I feel like because of the connotation towards Islam, that's why he is like this. He kind of like deviated from the religion, I feel like. He was doing I many good things, but he was never said, I'm a prophet, I'm a god. But... Even though that king, when he attacked the other country, he never killed a civilian, he never raped a woman, and he never made them to change the religion. Even somebody was worshiping a cow, he respect for them. Even though he was worshiping a real cow, he can, he can, he could make them to worship also same as what is worshiping. But in the Islam way, if you are, if you're gonna promote your religion, doesn't mean that you have to force it to somebody else, or you have to make them to accept that religion. Because, you know, human being means freedom. So anyone, they should have a right, human rights. So maybe those people, they didn't want that religion. So why they have to attack and, you know, to bring it by force? That was the main question that made my heart a bit, you know, <laughs> to make me to, my belief go down. So... Brother, are you a Parsi? Pardon? Yeah, I'm from Fars. Fars. Are you a Parsi? You mean Farsi? Are you a Parsi? Are you a Zoroastrian? No, I, I'm not following any religion. You don't I'm belong not, to any religion? I don't, I don't believe... But you said the parents, I, sir? My parents are Muslim, but because of this confusion and stuff, I never try to follow the religion. I just believe in real God and doing the good things. So you believe so in real God and good things. What are the good things? Where do you get the good things from? Good things like I don't harm the others. Whatever I'm doing, 
not try to harm the others. That's the first thing. As much as you can do the good things, even helping the others, and believe in the real God, not worshiping a stone or leaf or whatever. And I believe God is single. So, but I didn't. So you have your own philosophy. <laughs> so you want to bring a new religion? <laughs> I'm not gonna make any religion. I'm just following my brain because, as I know, God gave us a brain. So I didn't make my mind busy by following the books. I always, when I was 10 years old, I was just thinking, thinking, thinking until now even. So I tried Another to. Just thinking, my brain. thinking, he saying, God, as long as not a stone. Who told you stone is not a god? Anyway, <laughs> I'll answer your, your basic question. Thank your basic question is that Muslims came to Persia and they conquered and they forced people to accept Islam. So no one should force at all. I agree with you. Point to be noted is that today the media, the media, media promotes that Islam was fed by the sword. I am aware that there are certain black sheep in the Muslim community and there are certain Muslim rulers who did wrong things. But as a whole, Islam was never spread by the sword. Islam was never spread by the sword. It's spread by sword. Sword, sword. Sword. Sword means force. Force, yeah. Like you said, now Muslims came and conquered yeah, yeah. Persia, etc. You see, everywhere it's happening. There are wars taking place. But in Islam, it's clearly mentioned in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 256. Like Rafid Deen, there's no compulsion religion. Truth stands out clear from error. What we see today, if we analyze, that we Muslims, we Muslims, we were the Lord of the Arab lands for more than 1400 years. For the past 1400 years, the Muslims were the Lord of the Arab lands. For a few years, the Britishers came, for a few years, the French came, but overall, the Muslims were the rulers of the Arab land. Yet today, there are more than 9 million Christians who are Coptic Christians. That means they're Christians in generation. If the Muslims wanted, they could have forced each and every non-Muslim to accept Islam at the point of the sword in the Arab land. These more than 9 million Coptic Christians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. We Muslims, we ruled India for more than a thousand years. We ruled India for more than a thousand years. If we wanted, we could have forced every non-Muslim Indian to accept Islam at the point of the sword. Today, more than 80% of the Indians and non-Muslims. These more than 80% non-Muslim Indians, they are giving shahada, they are bearing witness that Islam was inspired by the sword. Which Muslim army has come to Indonesia? Indonesia today has the largest number of Muslims in any country, more than 200 million Muslims. In Malaysia, more than 55% of the citizens of Malaysia are Muslim. I am asking you, which Muslim army came to Malaysia? Your country, which Muslim army came? Which Muslim army went to the east coast of Africa? It was the business, it was the traders. When they came here, people accepted Yeah, I, I learned religion. that from the... It is the media geography which talks about Islam was spread Indonesia? by the sword. Yes, there were a few people. There were or a few black like sheep of the Muslim community. Brother, you ask the question, you're listening or you're raising the hand? Okay, sure, sure. You ask the question, you give the background and listen to it and now you want to raise your hand. I have not completed my answer. Okay, sure, continue. If you ask the question, you should think. Because if you're thinking something, I'm a doctor. If you're thinking, that means you won't hear my answer. If I ask you to repeat, you won't be able to repeat 25%. So when you listen, you should give attention. I'm a doctor. When we listen, we are thinking of the next thing to say we don't listen to listen we listen we don't listen to the, digest the conversation we listen because we are waiting to say the next thing we're waiting for a rebuttal we're like oh, oh I'm, I'm excited to tell them my point so that's something that we all have to learn is like to actually listen with an open heart and mind instead of like eagerness of like oh i want to say something hurry 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 <laughs> I've done psychology also. <laughs> so, this is the media hype. If you read Thomas Carlyle, Thomas Carlyle, historian, he writes in his book, Heroes and Hero Worship. He puts number one hero prophet as Prophet Muhammad. He's a Christian. He says, if every new idea originates in one man's head, one man said it dwells alone in the full world. It will do little good if he takes up a sword and propagates it. You have to first get your sword. He's talking about sword of intellect. There was a survey done in the Plainsuit magazine 
a survey in the increase of the major world religions in a span of 50 years. In a span of 50 years, from 1934 to 1984, in a span of 50 years, the increase in the major world religion. It came in Dieter Dijek's Almanac Yearbook, 1984. Number one maximum increase in any religion, it's Islam, 235%. Christianity, oh. only 47%. I'm asking you, which war took place between 1934 and 1984, which forced the non-Muslim to accept Islam? Which war? Which war? Today, today, leave aside the past. Today, the fastest growing religion in America is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. I'm asking you, who's forcing the Americans to accept Islam? Who's forcing the Europeans to accept Islam? You were not there born. Were you present in the past? Arabs came to my land and forced. Where were you present? This is history. Many things in history is false. So Pro that's where? what? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A very famous historian, Dilesi O'Leary, he writes in the book, Islam at the Crossroad, page number eight. He says, history makes it clear. History makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping across the world, forcing Islam at the point of the sword, is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians ever repeated. Who says that? Dilesi O'Leary. History makes it clear that the legend of fanatical Muslims forcing Islam at the point of the sword over conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians ever repeated. This is just in the media today. Muslim terrorist, Muslim terrorist. I am asking you, did any Muslim attack you in this country? No, never. But the media says Muslim the terrorist. Yeah, media is just nonsense. Yes, same way your history is also nonsense. <laughs> when media is nonsense, the history is also nonsense. Some is correct, some is wrong. That's the reason if you hear the answer. I would like to end my answer with the quotation of Dr. Adam Pearson. Dr. Adam Pearson says that people who worry that one day nuclear weaponry will fall in the hands of the Arabs, they fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has already been dropped. The bomb of peace, it fell the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born. Okay, thank you, doctor, for your answer. But the point is, I didn't get the right answer okay, because that's not media, that's his story. And history is not something that can be written the false way because if it be write, written the false way, it can be changed. But that was the true history in all over the world and it's written every place. Brother, did places. you hear my quotation of Delacy O'Leary? Can you repeat it? Repeat what? Repeat Delacy O'Leary's quotation. I said it twice, not once, twice. Most but of my answer was once. I said twice. Now repeat it. Repeat it to 50%. So what's the point of repeating that word? I want to know whether you, it went into your head or not. No, because that's what is in my head is, that is a history first thing. I'm asking you, can you repeat the statement, the answer which I gave earlier? If you cannot repeat, that means it's useless me repeating the answer. You're not listening to me, you're thinking something. No, I'm listening to you. You're can saying you repeat, that, that is media, can, that is Can false, you the repeat the statement of Delacy O'Leary, a very famous historian? No, I can't. I can. I'm saying it for third time. Listen, listen to it and go behind the queue. Delacy O'Leary says that history makes it clear the legend of fanatical Muslims forcing Islam at the point of the sword over what conquered races is the most fantastic, absurd myth that historians have ever repeated. Delacy O'Leary says history has been telling falsehood and you're saying history, I believe in history. Delacy O'Leary is saying that what history says that Muslims are forcing Islam at the point of the sword is the most fantastic myth that historians have repeated. So you have got influenced by the myth. So now think it's a myth and forget it and believe in the fact. The fact is you read the Quran and... It I'm sorry, but the rain, uh, oh my gosh, I don't know why... Yeah, we are in the storm. Inshallah, I want you okay. to revert to Islam. You cannot hear revert anyways. Revert back to the religion of, of your parents, Inshallah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. In the unseen, yeah. and the unseen, we only. I like the. I like that they come forward to ask questions because, yeah, if you have uh, confusion, ask questions. 
um i feel like it's better to ask in uh it's good to get your answers in this setting but it's better if it is like somebody who has the time and the willingness to help you throughout your all your whole questions because in this type of setting it's nice to go and listen and you know absorb some stuff but there it's not tailored specifically for you only so it's really hard to kind of like get to the core of what your questions are because you're only giving like a few minutes and only one question so you don't get satisfied like you can see the disappointment in the people's face when their questions are not exactly what they want to hear so those people really need that one-on-one -on -one guidance and but ultimately whoa this rain is really scaring me but ultimately um we from this side of the you know perception we get to hear and learn a lot of things as well so let me know what you guys thought if you like this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe and i will see you in the next video bye